Part 7 of Renovating a Vintage Workshop Type Steam Engine This opening clip shows me putting the cylinder cladding in place to have a look at it. But this episode is really about cleaning up the old parts and painting them where necessary. Here we have the cylinder covers, the front cover and the rear cover. These parts were cleaned up in the lathe using emery cloth, which is far too dangerous a procedure to show on here. Someone is bound to comment on how dangerous this is, so I really won't bother. All you do is you put the parts in the lathe, you spin them around quite fast and hold some emery cloth against them until all the dirt and the rust is removed. Considerable skill and practice is required to get proficient at cleaning up parts like this in the lathe without actually losing any body parts like fingers. Once both of the cylinder covers have been cleaned up, the painting can begin. I painted the two cylinder covers and the flywheel. The next thing to paint will be the engine's main bed plate. First of all though, I do need to remove these guide bars, as well as the bearing brasses and caps that support the crankshaft. A few words about painting models. I'm painting an old steam engine here, and I'm actually using Precision Paints Gloss Black. This is great paint and it really sticks well. Now then, I could use some primer, but the thing is with primers, particularly the spray primers, they're great, they sort of hold onto the metal, but then they flake off and you can have problems. I can use etching primer, but I really do find it unnecessary. When I used to read the works of LBSC in Model Engineer many years ago, he used to advocate just painting the model, just getting on with it. Particularly on a steam engine, because the thing gets hot and the paint sticks very well to the metal once it's baked on. There are many modern paints that are very good to use. I tend to stick to the ones that I know, and this precision paint stuff I do actually like. I enjoy brush painting model steam engines, but it's very important to spread the paint thinly and evenly, just enough to cover. This stuff is Terps Substitute, or Turpentine Substitute, or White Spirit. I'm using this stuff to degrease the bed plate before I paint it. It's a pretty messy job and the stuff smells bad, so I generally do this outside. With the white spirit in a suitable container, I use an old toothbrush to get into every nook and cranny of the engine. And once I've removed all the years of accumulated grime, I would then refill the container with some clean white spirit and literally pour it over the bed plate. This gets rid of any particles and bits of grease that remain. Generally, for a bed plate of this size, I would use a whole bottle of white spirit. It's not very expensive stuff. The next thing to do is to let the white spirit evaporate from the bed plate. And once all the white spirit has evaporated fully, it's time to paint the bed plate. A top tip here is to put two pieces of clean wood under each end of the bed plate. Then as you work your way down the thing, you do not pick up any dirt from the bench. Once again, I'm using a very small brush, and this is the way I do it. With a very small brush, I can control how thinly I spread the paint. If you use a great big commercial paintbrush, there are bound to be runs and they look really unsightly. So with a very small brush, you can go back and forth, work the paint in and end up with a nicely painted bed plate that looks the business. The next job to look at is the manufacture of a new steam chest cover because this one's too badly damaged. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.